We bought a 1994 Toyota Supra Mark IV. We've already torn it apart, installed the wide body kit, and dropped it off at the paint shop. I'm gonna head up to Biggie's Customs now and check it out. All right, well, we made it up here to BCC Unlimited. I love coming up here because they always got surprises for us. Now, Doug's been sending me daily updates on the Supra, but today they're actually going to be laying down our uh, custom paint. So we're going to go check it out and hopefully see some of the process. All right, we just walked into the door here at BCC Unlimited. As you guys know, we use Doug and his boys for a lot of our paint jobs, especially for our SEMA cars. The car has rolled in the booth. I'm about to get my first look at all the work they've been doing because they've literally been jamming on this thing every day since we dropped it off. Ooh, I got a little peek. See some sealer down already and the primers there. Let's take a look at it. Sealer is on. They've molded the body kit. It looks epic. Oh my gosh, is this thing wide? And this is a full color change, guys. Glass is out. Every part is basically off the car that's not needed to make sure that we get the color everywhere in all the jams and nooks and crannies. It's gonna look amazing. Look at this body. Look at this. It's all been blended in so nicely. This is the vent area where the brake ducting is at and we've actually added a uh, pipe to the back of the uh, side skirt. So instead of it just ending abruptly, it's gonna go off into the actual functional brake duct. There's our color. Woo, a lot of flake in there. This is just a factory paint color too from Lamborghini. I believe it's just Lamborghini's orange from that late 90s era, probably the Gallardo. Can't wait to see it laid down. It is early in the morning. I just arrived at Biggie's Customs. We got a tow truck driver that's gonna be here in about 15 minutes. The paint is completely done. All the body work's done. It's ready to go back to the shop and get cranking for SEMA. All right. Hello? Can't find anybody in here right now, but I do see the Supra. So I'm gonna go take a peek. Super arrived. Oh my god. Whew. Thanks for getting down here safely. Dude, I don't even know what to say. It's like. 
So you guys are probably wondering why we didn't go pick this up on our usual U-Haul trailer situation. <laughs> and that's because this car doesn't fit on a U-Haul because it's too wide. It's gonna be fun trying to get this thing to and from the raceway. We're gonna have to buy a wider trailer. She's back and she's definitely wide. Looks really good, the paint are awesome. So cool. Ta-da. Pretty spot on if you ask me, brother. Mm -hmm. A lot so. of people probably ask me what color this is. This is actually Lamborghini Gallardo. I don't know the technical name for it, but it is a Lamborghini orange. You guys can see we've got the Mark IV Super back here in the throttle shop. We've got all, well, most of our parts laid out. What do we got here, Quinn? I don't think we've ever had this many parts ready for a build. I don't think we have either. So this is gonna be the second in-house engine build we've done here at Throttle. I'm very excited for it, of course, because not only is it an engine build, but it is a 2JZ GTE, as you guys know, it came with the Mark IV Supra. So we have a lot of parts for this thing. It is going to be an epic engine build, starting over here. The engine that we had pulled out of the car was actually in fairly rough condition. The cylinder head was really beyond repair, so we got a new one. Luckily, Toyota has a heritage program and these parts were still available. So this is a brand new cylinder head from Toyota. From there, we sent it out uh, to Port Flow in Harbor City. Tom did his magic, so thank you, Tom. So we have a port and pocket ported with a radial valve job on the cylinder head. We also have a slew of Brian Crower parts. We have valve guides, brand new set of intake and exhaust valves a valve spring kit with titanium retainers, and then a set of two 72 camshafts to finish it off. We've got the same crank that was in the Jay-Z. This one's in really good condition. We have a set of forged Wiseco pistons. So these are stock compression. We have ARP hardware everywhere on the rods, on the mains, and on the head, which is really nice. Of course, we have our Wiseco. These are actually boost line connecting rods. So I'm very excited to use these because they look wicked. So we reached out to our friends over at Advanced Auto Parts and they sent us a slew of parts. So right here is a timing belt kit, new component kit. So we've got all of our idlers, all of our tensioners, water pumps, and pretty much every single engine sensor we're gonna be using is from our friends over at Advanced Auto Parts, which is really neat. We have a radium fuel pump hanger. This part is really cool specifically because not only is it a triple pump hanger, but it's already bulkheaded and set up. We're gonna be running some massive fuel lines on this thing for the power. We have a slew of Gretti parts from our timing belts. We have a new blow off valve. We have an oil filter relocation kit. We have fresh, brand new peak coolant by Advanced Auto Parts. So, a huge shout out to them. We're going to be running full Motul fluids. Of course, we have our engine block here. This is fresh machine work on it, uh, fresh deck for the new head gasket, and they have been bore matched for our new pistons for good piston to skirt clearance. We can run some high power. We have a slew of radium parts for fueling and a few for kind of some other things in the engine base, such as our catch can stuff. Of course, we're going to be running an Optima battery. We run them on pretty much all the builds we have, and we absolutely love them and Sunoco. Without Sunoco, this car would not be going to SEMA, so a huge shout out to them. So we love Sunoco fuels around here. They allow your engine to run cleaner, longer, and more efficiently. And on a fresh engine build like this, we don't want anything going on. They have the same detergent levels as a NASCAR, which is awesome. It's gonna keep our engine running very nicely, keep everything nice and clean. No carbon buildup on the pistons or on the intake valves or any of that stuff running the Sunoco fuel. Huge shout out to Sunoco. Thank you guys for helping us build the Supra and get this thing ready for SEMA. We've got some parts from PRP. If you guys have been watching our R32 GTST build, you saw us use a bunch of PRP stuff on that car. Um, we're also going to be using their coil pack kit as well on this car. And as you can see where we're going with this uh, color scheme here, we've got the blue, coil pack mount that goes down in the valley. Um, they did provide us with the R35 coils, as well as the harness that will made up to our ride wire harness and the boots that are necessary to make that all work. We also have a set of carbon fiber canards that are gonna be fitted to our uh, Big East Custom freshly painted front bumper. I mean, look how cool that's gonna look on here. <laughs> so, really excited about those. And to get into more power stuff, Quinn, you just got done talking about our engine. Oh man. Can't help but notice this these couple thing. of bits right here. Oh, 
is just to show you guys the sheer um, size of this turbo. Uh, it is massive. This is a Garrett G, new G series. Yep. It's a G42 1200. Very exciting, full V-fan. We're gonna be matching it with an Artec uh, cast exhaust manifold. We used one of Artec's manifolds on our Skyline and it was such a fun piece and it just, it's such a composed component and it, really it just is. keeps everything really close and tight, which is really nice, so. Some, some of the cool details we, we saw on this was how this wastegate tube is actually accentuated. It actually gets larger as it comes out. It does, yeah, and if you can stick in there, just how everything flows together is such a nice piece. You really don't see much of that on a typical V-band setup, which is really cool. Moving on from there, we're gonna pair our turbo with this K&N filter. Of course we went with the carbon, uh, carbon housing filter. I don't know if you guys have ever seen one of these before. We use them on a lot of our builds, but you can't beat the look of carbon fiber in your engine bay, I don't think. And these filters come with a nice carbon fiber cap, suit our build quite nicely. Moving on from there, we've got a Willwood brake kit and we're not just grabbing any off the shelf brake kit for this car. In the front, we had to reach out to our friend, Rad Dan over at Rad Industries. He had these hats made up for us. Look how beautiful these things are. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna allow us to run a Willwood vented brake rotor bolted to his hat. And then we've also got a set of his caliper brackets as well. It's gonna allow us to bolt on a more aggressive Willwood caliper that's gonna suit these rotors as well. And then on the rear, we're doing something a little unusual that you don't normally see. We're actually downsizing the rear brake. And the reason we're doing that is because we're having our friends over at Motegi make us a custom set of drag wheels. They're 15 inch in the rear. And so in, in order to fit those, we actually have to shrink down the rear brake. So we're going to a JZA80 NA, that's naturally aspirated uh, version of this car's rear brakes, which aren't as aggressive as the turbo model. So in order to get them under the wheels, we had to shrink them down. So Advanced Auto Parts was kind enough to uh, send over the rear calipers and rear rotors for that. And we're pairing those with EBC brake pads, which are gonna help bring this thing to a halt at the drag strip. Well, let's cruise on back a little further. Quinn, why don't you grab these next couple items and tell the folks why we chose these and what they're gonna do for the project. So we have a trust exhaust system that's gonna be going on by Gretti. Very beautiful piece. We've put them on quite a few Skylines here and they're yeah. really fun. They have a lot of really nice features on it. One of them is of course the adjustable tip. Yep. So when this thing starts shooting flames, we can start <laughs> moving that back away from the body. Burn work. our pretty paint. Yeah, we have a set of KW, these are V3 coilovers. Yeah, these are the these are the V3s and these are uh, dual adjustable so you can see the adjustment knob down here. So they are going to be able to adjust compression and rebound on these, which is really cool. Moving on, they also sent off their toolkit, which is pretty neat. We'll get more into this stuff uh, when we start to do these installs, but there are a lot of really cool um, stuff that we can do to set up the car with the KWs because they are so functional and adjustable. What is that? This is our TurboSmart 50 millimeter wastegate that we're gonna be running and controlling this massive turbo with. So this guy should be up to the task. Yeah, we I have a spring so. kit and a whole bunch of things that we're gonna allow us to uh, adjust this. All right, well, let's move on to this, because this is kind of, to me, like, and this is a focal point of this build. This is definitely wild. There's, there's so many parts on this build that we could just mount up on the wall. <laughs> yes. and, and if you guys have been watching our videos, you've seen the box, the Recaro box is up on our shelves back there. That's because we've had these seats for a few months now, knowing that we we're gonna be doing this build and we're saving them just for this. These are the Recaro podium seat. And we've got two of these, not just one. We've got one for each side. These are a carbon fiber reinforced seat uh, and they come with detachable pads that are interchangeable. So we can change colors of pads, whatever we want to do. But we're going to be pairing those with the Recaro side mounts and then the Buddy Club low rise seat rails to get these things real low in the car. We also reached out to our friends at Carbonetics. They went ahead and whipped us up this dash kit, full carbon. It's basically the stock componentry that they've overlaid in carbon for us. Instead of a stick on uh, second layer, that always kind of looks incomplete, at least in my opinion. Um, these are a full carbon overlay and they turned out fantastic. I can't wait to see them in the, uh, in the gauge area. I see a set of Cusco bars here. So <laughs> this is uh, one of the few parts we actually did score yeah. in this Supra originally. So yep. Cusco makes some really cool stuff. We pretty yep. much threw their entire catalog at our Evo when we had it and yep. we absolutely love it. So. These are a little dirty, a little crusty. We're gonna clean these guys back up and be reusing them because we were gonna buy Cusco braces for them anyways. Unfortunately, we're only gonna be using one of these braces because one thing we haven't mentioned is that we did partner with our friends over at Titan Motorsports. Now, if you guys are Supra fanatics, you guys have heard of Titan Motorsports. They've been in the Supra game forever. They've built some of the fastest Supras in the world. 
and they're no stranger to drag racing. So we reached out to them early on. We started this project because we wanted this kind of a drag racing uh, facing type of build. And they stepped up and said, you know, we want to send you guys our roll cage and all these other things that they make. So they've got some really cool stuff and we'll get to some of those other items. We've got them back here. Uh, right now we've got their uh, radiator mounts, we've got their rear seat delete kit, we've got their roll cage, we've got their uh, line lock setup that's specific for the JZA chassis. We also picked up the Titan increased bore size uh, clutch master cylinder. This is using tilt and parts and then they have their own uh, mounts and, and um, componentry made for this kit, which is gonna allow this, uh, make sure we can handle this heavy clutch disc that we got coming from Action Clutch. <laughs> we got a pretty beefy boy coming. One of the parts that hasn't arrived yet is actually a triple disc clutch from Action Clutch. Yep. Very exciting piece. It's gonna be my first time setting up a triple disc, which is gonna be a lot of fun. <laughs> and from a look standpoint, you know, we wanna modernize this car in a, in a nice way, but not go over the top. The JZA80 platform has really nice looking headlights and taillights straight out of the box. It's one of the things that everybody loves about these cars. Um, but we reached out to our friends at Morimoto Lighting and they sent us off a bunch of upgrade lighting componentry. So we're actually gonna be taking apart the factory JZA80 headlights and taillights and rebuilding them with all new upgraded lighting, all LEDs, um, and we're gonna be throwing some trick stuff at these lights. That's gonna be a project that Will's gonna manage that's right up his alley. And I look forward to seeing how it all turns out because I think lighting upgrades are very underrated, but very cool when they're done properly. Now, Quinn, I know fueling is super important, especially when you're trying to make a thousand horsepower. And as always, we're working with our friends at Deechworks. Uh, what do we have here? We have a full fuel system from our friends over at Deechworks. We have fuel pumps, fuel rails, pressure regulators, filtration kits, and we're actually gonna be running Dash 10 through the entire thing. So this, <laughs> this super is gonna be using a lot of fuel. Look at this fuel hose. It's it like a is garden hose. It's going to be massive. Now, all the cars I've ever built, I've never ran Dash 10 fuel feed or return. This like would be ever. my first. Yep. The Eclipse used Dash 6, the Viper okay. used Dash 8. Yeah. But we're going to be running Dash, dash 10. Dash 8 is what's on the bad apple. And as you guys know, rotaries use a lot of fuel. But Dash 10 is just absurd. This is this is <laughs> what we use in most cars for oil. Yes. For oil coolers and oil <laughs> lines. So it's going to be absolutely epic. This thing is going to eat, man. It's going to be such a cool car. So, Deechworks. Thank you guys, they sent us off the full complement of fueling components that we need to make this thing make the power we need and paired with those other radium bits, the, the hanger and all that stuff, we're gonna be in real good shape. Absolutely. And so for cooling, we reached out to CSF. CSF is a pretty new partner for us. Um, depending on the project, you know, we bounce back and forth with our cooling partners. On this particular one, because we're building such a high horsepower setup, we wanted to make sure that we had the, the cooling that we needed to keep it cool at the racetrack. Uh, CSF makes this drop in radiator and it is going to require some modification. Uh, we are changing our cooling size. So we're going to go from a slip on to a dash 20. Um, so we're going to have to modify some things on this, but they sent us over one of their polished radiators so that we can make those changes. So we have a yep. ton of parts from our friends over at Chase Bays that are going to help us achieve the slim engine bay look. What do we have over here, Mickey? Basically, we've got a brake booster delete set up here. This thing is super trick. It's got biasing already built into it. It's already comes hard lined and plumbed um, for basically just a drop in fit. And then you just plumb your lines off of this, which as you know, Quinn, we've done a hundred times here. So very simple. Um, man, look at these fittings too. Banjos to dash four coming out. Um, I just love the packaging of this. We also have a bunch of their canisters here. So we've got radiator overflow canister. We've got a catch can and we've got a power steering uh, can as well. We are going to be running a set of Mickey Thompson ET drags. And these are sized at 28, 10.5, 15. And we're going to be running a much bigger wheel on the front, more of a streetcar setup, but we're going to run um, a really sticky deal on the back. And this is going to allow us to really get down the drag strip pretty quick. So I hope you guys are excited. We're building an actual 10 second car. And one of the last pieces, of course, is a big APR wing. My only requirement for this wing was that it would be bigger than Ricky's Audi. And, oh, I, think, and I think that one takes the cake by quite a bit. So guys, you're probably like, you know, some of you probably aren't into wings or big wings for that matter, but you gotta understand, we are building this car as a modern tribute to the movie Hero Car. And so what we wanna do is 
basically upgrade all the stuff to modern technology or modern uh, composites or something that makes it better than what the movie car had. So we reached out to Chris and the boys over at APR and had them whip us up something super special. Now this is a custom width. We had them make us some smaller end plates. We had them put our pickups at 18 inches on center and we've paired it with the Speedwell's ducktail. So this is gonna be a really unique combination of a GT wing paired with a ducktail and it's all modern look and styling. So I'm really excited to see how this all comes together. We're putting wings on wings around here and I'm not apologizing for it because I think it's gonna look pretty freaking cool. So I'm excited to see that mounted up. We've already got the holes under this blanket here to put the uprights on and this thing's gonna sit roof height and just look absolutely epic and uh, very menacing as you look down the side of this car. And so that kind of rounds out what we have here today, but we have a bunch of other stuff still inbound, including full suspension arms from Battle Version we're pairing those with Titan upper arms from our friends at Titan Motorsports. So this thing's gonna have a full complement of suspension underpinnings as well. So if we didn't wanna drag race this thing, we could throw some regular stickies on it and actually take it to the course. Very exciting, we <laughs> have a lot of parts as you guys obviously can see that took a while just to get through them and not, even, not all of them are even here. <laughs> so No, there's more and I'm sure I'm forgetting <laughs> some unfortunately. Uh, we've got partners stepping up for this build left and right and uh, it is gonna be absolutely mental. Now, what's the only problem we have here? Time. We have <laughs> three weeks to build this car. Oh, this car, I got you, soon. dog. You want time? Buy the magazine. <laughs> <laughs> so we gotta get cranking on this thing. You, I, Will, and Ricky have a lot of work to do. <laughs> So... Not to mention the 350Z and the Civic that also have to get completed before SEMA time. Yeah, so yes, that's we've fair. got our hands full for sure. But rest assured, guys, we don't skimp on details. We are not going to skimp on this build. It is going to be epic. You guys are going to have to hit that subscribe button because we're going to be coming at you fast and furious with the video <laughs> uploads. <laughs> You're right for it. <laughs> So right. hit the subscribe button guys, definitely leave us comments. Let us know what you're excited to see on this car. Maybe there's something you would add, but I'll tell you right now, we are backs against the wall. Adding stuff is gonna be real difficult at this point. I think the plan is pretty laid out. We just gotta execute, man. All right, well there's nothing to it but to do it guys. Let's get our hands dirty and get this thing on the lift.